Section 10.2 Use Measures of Central Tendency and Dispersion. Section 10.2 Use Measures of Central Tendency and Dispersion. Before you analyze surveys and samples. Now you will compare measures of central tendency and dispersion. Key vocabulary, measures of dispersion, range, mean, absolute deviation. Measures of dispersion, range, and mean absolute deviation. Key concept, measures of central tendency. The mean or average of a numerical data set is denoted by X bar which is read as X bar. For the data set X sub 1, X sub 2, all the way through X of n, the mean is X of 1 plus X of 2 plus all the way out, add all the way out to X of n and then divide by n where n is a total number of numbers in the data set. The median of a numerical data set is the middle number when the values are written in numerical order, in other words, from least to greatest. If the data set has an even number of values, the median is the mean of the two middle, uh, two middle values. The mode of a data set is the value that occurs most frequently. There may be one mode, no mode, or more than one mode. Example 1. Compare measures of central tendency. The heights in feet of eight waterfalls in the state of Washington are listed below. Which measure of central tendency best represents the data? This is our data set right here. Notice we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. Solution. X bar, also known as the mean, also known as the average, is equal to we take all the numbers and we're going to add them and we're going to divide by the number of, of numbers in a data set. After adding we will come out with 10,752. So now we take the 10,752 and divide that by 8 and that will equal to 1,344. The median is the mean of the two middle values. And the two minute values will be 1,191 and 1,200. When we add these two together and then divide by two, we will come out with 1,195.5. And the mode is 1,000. Okay, as a repeat, define the mean or the average. And notice this means average and mean X bar. We take all the numbers, we add them up, and then divide by the total numbers in the data set. In this case, it was 8. Define the median. The median is the number that occurs in the middle. And like I said in the key, sign, in the key concept, if there's not one number in the middle, then we circle both the numbers that make up the middle. Now, you notice in the middle because you have 1, 2, 3 on the left-hand side, and you got 1, 2, 3 numbers on the right-hand side. So you're going to add these two up and then divide by 2. In this case you would have come, you would have come out with this number right here 1195.5. The mode is the number that occurs most often. So the number that occurs most often is 1000. Okay with that in mind then the median best represents the data. The mode is significantly less than most of the data and the mean also called the average is significantly greater than most of the data. Measures of dispersion. A measure of dispersion describes the dispersion or spread of data. Two such measures are the range, which gives the length of the interval containing the data, and the mean absolute deviation, which gives the average variation of the data from the mean. Key concept. Measures of dispersion. The range of a numerical data set is the difference of the greatest value and the least value. In other words, the highest number minus the lowest number. The mean absolute deviation of a data set, x of 1, x of 2, all the way through x of n, is given by 
the mean absolute deviation is equal to the absolute value of x of 1 minus the average plus the absolute value of x of 2 minus the average plus all the numbers that are in between their absolute value minus the average along with the last number x of uh, the absolute value of x of n minus the average all that is going to be divided by the total of numbers in the data set which is called n in this case example 2 compare measures of dispersion running the top 10 finishing times in seconds for runners in two men's races are given the times in a 100 meter dash are in set A and the times in a 200 meter dash are in set B compare the spread of data for the two sets using A the range and B the mean absolute deviation so for A this is your data set and as you can see it contains 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 numbers for B this is your data set it also contains 10 numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 solution A to find the range for A you take the highest value which is 11.32 alright that's 11.32 minus the lowest value which is 10.62 and that's equal to 0.7 for B it's going to be 22.73 minus 21.37 which is equal to 1.36 the range of set B is greater than the range of set A so the data in B cover a wide interval excuse me covers a wider interval than the data in set A okay now for question B we have to find the mean absolute deviation so before we can find a mean absolute deviation the first thing we gotta find is uh, the mean for set A we gotta find the average for set A alright now so what that means is you would take your calculator and you would add up all the values and then divide by 10 once again add up all the values and then divide by 10 after dividing by 10 you should find out that the average is going to be 11.07 once again the average or the mean is going to be 11.07 now after that you're going to use the formula that they gave you back up in the key concept this is the formula right here all right and once again notice what we're working with absolute value the first value minus the average plus the second value absolute value the second value minus the average and etc so what we're going to be doing is all right the first value in set a is 10.62 so we're gonna have the absolute value of 10.62 minus 11.07 which is the average plus the second value which is 10.94 minus the average which is 11.01 .01, plus the next value and they're not showing you this but this is what you got to do plus the next value will be 10.98 so it would be the absolute value of 10.98 minus 11.07 .07. then after 10.98 comes 11.05 so 11.05 absolute value minus 11.07 and you do that all the way to the end now they pick up so they got the dot 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 that means etc so they picked they picked up at the last value so the absolute value of 11.32 minus 11.07 now after they do all of this they do the absolute value take all that then they add it all up and they're going to come out with excuse me then they add it all up and then they divide by 10 and then they come out with 0 0.164 so the mean absolute value deviation is 0.164 now the mean for set B is 22.226 so the mean absolute deviation is 21.37 alright look at set B 21.37 
minus the average. Once again, how did he get the average? You take all the numbers in the set, add them up, and then divide by 10. So, once again, 21.37 minus 22.226. What's the next value? 21.4. So, 21.4 minus 22.226. And do not forget, you take an absolute value. You take an absolute value. Now, then you do all the numbers in between. All right? And, of course, they can't show you all of them because there's not enough space in the book to do that. But on your paper, you should be doing that. All right, then we get right here. That's the last value. So now you got absolute value of 22.73 minus the average, which is 22.226. You take the absolute value here, plus the absolute value there, plus the absolute value of all the ones in between, and plus the absolute value of the last number in the set, which is um, uh, 22.73. Add all those up and then divide by 10 and you will come out with 0.3364 for the mean absolute deviation. All right, now comparing both the absolute mean deviations, set A, set B, the mean absolute deviation of set B is greater, so the average variation from the mean is greater for the data in B than for the data in A. All right, now for those of us who need further clarification or you may be a little bit confused on how to compute the mean absolute deviation, all right, let's look at set A. I'm going to show you with, a, uh, with one or two of the items in set A. Okay, so the first value in set A was 10.62. So 10.62 10 minus the average, which is 11.04. And remember, you're doing absolute value. So 10.62 minus 11.07 is equal to a negative 0.45. Don't forget your uh, absolute value. Now, what's the absolute value of a negative 0.45? That's going to be 0.45. So that's your first value right there. Now you go and compute the next value, realizing that you're going to be adding. So now the next value in this set is 10.94. So 10.94 minus 11.07. That's equal to a negative 0.13. Bring down your absolute value symbols. They were here, so you bring them down. Now, what's the absolute value of a negative 0.13? That's going to be 0.13. So, so far, you got 0.45 plus 0.13. Now, you would do that for the remaining eight items in your data set. After you add all those up, then you're going to divide by 10, and you will come out with 1.13. 0.164. Now, of course, you're going to do this particular example in class as practice to be sure that you understand what's going on. All right. So that concludes um, today's lesson.